shine at? And the answer was clear, you know? <laughs> um, so why, why do you want to stalk someone? Okay, there's online dating, you know, Tinder. It's so easy, right? You just know someone's name, know their profession, or actually something related to what they do. You know a city, and you can pretty much come across their LinkedIn. Uh, you can get to their Facebook or their Twitter. If you're trying to date like an 18-year-old hipster, maybe their Tumblr. I don't know. Um, but okay, the, that's the stalking one-to-one, -one, right? But what about grand-scale stalking? Okay, so I have to say, this talk is not going to be about how you can stalk your lover. It's going to be about um, different research projects that, that have been going on in universities where people take all this data that is available and they try to infer things about people. And some of the results are a bit creepy, but also very cool. And I think they give you some uh, impression of um, the things you can learn from this data. So the first, um, the first project I'm going to be talking about is uh, essentially, I call it, you are what you like. And uh, what, what was done uh, by these guys, uh, Kozinski, uh, was that they took uh, Facebook likes uh, from a lot of users and they try to infer some personal traits. So this goes from pretty easy stuff like, okay, gender, maybe your ethnicity, that's not too hard to infer, but uh, gets a bit creepier. So they, they infer also the sexual orientation, um, also whether you take drugs or you smoke, uh, and very weird stuff like, are your parents still together by the age of 21, which is a little bit strange. So, and, and the cool thing is that a lot of this was very accurate. So the first two um, things I mentioned, so gender and ethnicity was actually very, very accurate. And um, all, all the personal traits they try to predict are, at the, I think the lowest thing, uh, accuracy was about 63%, which it's, it's nice. Um, well, nice. Uh, they, they also try to predict uh, some of more um, subjective things, such as whether you're like an open person, you're a competitive person, uh, and some, some of these things. Um, so I'll just talk about their method very quickly. Uh, and if you want more detail, I would say, okay, you can refer to the paper, or we, we can also, you can also ask me during the, the questions. Uh, so essentially what they do is, um, they have data from uh, users, right? Their Facebook likes, uh, and they also have some. Uh, they also have data from the same people. They they took some uh, tests, like um, psychometric tests, some IQ tests, um, and stuff like that. So this this serves as the validation. So how is this done? So essentially, you have a huge matrix where you have all your users, all the likes, and then it's. Uh, well, zero, one entry matrix, right? So if you like something, you have a one under your interest. If not, uh, there's a zero. And then what they do is a singular value decomposition, so collapse the dimension of this thing, and then trying to classify on this. So they use linear regression for continuous variables and uh, logistic regression for categorical variables. Um, okay, so, but, this is the most technical thing I'll be talking about. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to show you some of the uh, predictor variables that gave out uh, the labels. So, okay, if you find yourself liking RPGs, fan fiction, programming, anime, basically like all the stuff I like, turns out we might be shy and reserved. <laughs> That's, I mean, this, this is pretty, it's not that strange, right? <laughs> but, uh, okay, if you like these things, sounds like a pretty random list. You might be spontaneous. Also, serial killer, screamo, not dying. It's awkward. Um, if you hate everyone, hate you, the police, Ayn Rand, I totally did not write that down. Uh, you might be a competitive person. And this is my favorite, the last one. If you like walking with your friends and randomly pushing them into someone or something, you might not have a lot of friends. You know? Okay, um, so there's a, the complete list on the link. So if you want to check it out, uh, it's actually very fun. There's a lot of interesting things there. And again, uh, refer to the paper for more information. Um, so the second thing I'm going to be talking about is uh, inference from mobile data. 
So uh, cell phones, um, you know, cell phones are used to communicate, but you can also, it's pretty much a tracking device, right? So essentially, um, I'm going to be talking about two studies. Uh, what the first one, they try to infer just from uh, cell phone data, such as like call logs and location uh, logs. They try to infer uh, relations between people, whether they are from the same family, their friends, or coworkers. Uh, and this is pretty neat. The way they represent this is, um, is essentially um, a partially labeled graph. So some, sometimes people actually label these connections, right? On my phone, I have brother, has my brother. So you could get the label from that. Um, but a lot of the times, you don't label anything. So the cool thing uh, with what they did, this was with 107 users. They tracked them over 10 months. Um, and they, th their best predictor was actually um, around the accuracy of 83%. So that's pretty neat. Uh, the second thing is uh, another study also using mobile data. So what they try to do here is um, they ask people who work in the same place and they ask them um, whether they are friends with uh, their coworkers or not. And then they try to infer these labels from from what, uh, from what they said, right? So if this is not clear, please shout. <laughs> uh, so anyways, um, what is the data that they have? They have uh, call logs, they have uh, cell tower IDs, they have um, other devices in proximity. Um, they got tracked over nine months. And uh, also, yeah, they, they had this quiz where they say whether this person is their friend or not. And uh, there's some interesting results from this. So. <coughs> There's, oh, this is a bit hard to, to see, but essentially they came up with some variables to try to capture these, uh, these raw data, right? So they look at the proximity between people on Saturday night, uh, the phone communication, um, whether like the, the proximity at work, uh, proximity outside of work and stuff like that. So there are seven variables. Again, you can get more information from the paper. Um, and what they do then, they represent this in terms of a baseline. So the baseline is um, they took the people who actually um, both said they were friends, uh, and they take that as your, okay, your maximum, right? And then you express all the other variables in terms of this baseline. So for instance, if, uh, if both people acknowledge that they're not friends, like their communication is like less than 5%, it would be here. Like less than 5% of what they would communicate if they were friends. Um, so that's the idea. And um, there are some pretty interesting things coming from this. First is that you can predict the proximity of work by looking at the proximity at home. Um, you can also um, you can find the two best uh, indicators of whether people are friends or not. So by just looking at their uh, externally uh, at the communication outside of work between people, you can pretty accurately determine whether they are friends or not. But there is, um, so okay, so the picture here is that you can determine whether guys are friends or not, or they're, but when there is the case, the awkward case, when one person says they are friends and the other does not acknowledge them, um, there is something interesting going on because you sort of see traits of uh, around the area of not being friends, but also some things that actually exceed the baseline of being friends with someone. You know, so th this could just mean that friendship is not a categorical variable. So, I mean, there's different levels of friendship. So, yeah, it could be that. It could be different types of culture. Uh, or, you know, in scientific jargon, this is what we like to call it, the friend zone. Um, <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, um, this is pretty, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's sort of obvious, right? If you're friends with someone, you probably have a lot more communication with them. But uh, the paper goes on to, to look at other things. They also try to determine what is the most important thing in this data to determine friendship or not. And also, they relate this to the satisfaction at work. So if you have a lot of friends at work, maybe you will be more satisfied. So for more information, I would look at the paper. So what happens with this? So these sort of websites come out. So there's this website 
where it's pretty much called, yeah, you are what you like, and you can log in with your Facebook, and it looks at your Facebook likes and tries to tell, yeah, tries to come up with a prediction of what sort of person you are. There's also something that's a bit more creepy, which is called Please Rob Me, <laughs> and uh, basically looks at your Twitter and your Instagram, oh, no, at your Twitter and your Foursquare and tries to determine whether you're at home or not. Slightly weird. I think it's closed down, I, I hope. And then there's this ultimate creepy thing, which is actually not machine learning, but I just felt the need to put it out there because it's this program where you can put someone's nickname from Instagram, uh, Flickr, and um, Twitter, and essentially just gives you the history of where they've been if they do geotagging. So you, you get a map and all the timestamps. It's really creepy and awesome, sort of. Anyway, so. What's the take home message from this talk? Well, when you go on an online date, no, no, just kidding, no. So be mindful of how much information you leave out there, I suppose. And also machine learning is really cool. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for listening to this talk. Uh, follow me on Twitter. You can read me on Scriptogram or you can talk to me in real life. So if you have any questions, so, yeah. Hi there. Was this understandable? It was is it like on. very. Hi there. Ah, wait. I just, uh, I was reading an article a few weeks ah, ago I that was about. <laughs> um, hi. It was like this person had basically liked everything on Facebook. Oh, yes. They kind of liked every single thing, and it kind of. Facebook got really confused about what to show them in their feed. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of interested in um, how those kind of DIY very simple hacks of these kind of um, machine learning researches, mm. like how does that tessellate with what, you're, with what you're interested in and what you're doing? Mm. No, yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, that, that was, of course you, you're gonna have like, um, so first I think the, the data set they use here, um, they, they try to use something that is nice, right? That, if someone looked at that data point, the person with all these likes, they would probably label it as an outlier. Um, I don't know, I'm not well aware of how the Facebook actually does machine learning. I'm pretty sure they just try to like come up with like articles that your friends liked, right? Uh, but yeah, I suppose it's easy, you can easily confuse it as well. So, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, I suppose that if that guy's um, profile would enter this data set, uh, you would easily be able to, to rule it out as an outlier because it wouldn't provide you any information, I think. Yeah, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>